Hey there folks, Rinium T here, and welcome back to Game of Fortune. In the last part, we wrapped up the third game, on this route anyway, and Zeph was a traitor. And now we're back in the lounge, and we're just gonna chill until the other group gets here. So, time for a whole lot of talking. And through the lounge, we quickly moved over to one of the couches. Pichu sat opposite of Richard and me. Alright, well, where to begin? Probably the beginning. Wow, good idea, smartass. Just saying. I guess it'd be best to explain things from my grandma's side. So this whole story kind of starts with her? See, the thing is that my grandmother was immortal once before, actually. Seriously? Yep. I think it was around 20 or so years ago? My grandma was a founding member along with Nigel and Philip. Huh? Philip was a founding member? Yeah, not his proudest moment from what he tells me. Rather, he didn't mind being part of its founding, but never really felt happy about how it ended up. So he left it once things got dicey, but this was a long time ago, probably 30 or so years in the past. That sounds about right from what grandma told me. Anyway, around 12 years ago, my grandma ended up losing her immortality. How do you lose immortality? The same way you get it. Someone wishes for it. I told you how about, about how these games were called selfless games, right? There are actually a lot of different kinds of games. Selfless games are called that because the wishes can only affect those outside <coughs> outside of the game. Selfish games are the opposite. There are wishes that can only affect people within them. Uh, there's more than just this one? Yep, but a lot of them have different conditions on how you get, uh, get access to them. For example, Game of Fortune requires 16 participants on the 4th of April every 4 years with pairs holding hands when they enter. Another one where you have to sleep with one eye open before the new year. Another requires that you jump in the water, but you have to be falling for five seconds. A lot of weird ones, honestly. If you don't get the right criteria, the whole game itself won't run. How do you learn all this stuff? There's surprisingly a lot of occultist material that people have been gathering for a while now. And like I said, my grandma wanted to make sure that I knew as much about this stuff as possible so I could take the reins over from her someday. Anyway, the point I wanted to make was that someone made a wish to take away my grandmother's immortality. But why? They were a disgruntled member of the Digits Eda. My grandmother had a bad reputation of not fulfilling all her duties, and because of that, some people suffer. Because of that, someone actually entered the gate into the game with the intention of knocking her down a peg, so to speak. Yikes, did she do a bad job or something? Ichi shrugged. I don't know, she's primarily in charge of managing public relations both inside and outside the organization. So maybe she just pissed off the wrong people. They have some internal structure currently split among the four leaders, Nigel, Sebastian Cole, and my grandma, but we can talk about those later. I was more amazed someone would put themselves through this agony just to take away her immortality. I'm more surprised at the idea that anyone would put themselves through this bullshit just to get back at someone in such a petty way. Alright, so 12 years ago, someone takes away your grandpa's immortality. Can't they just get someone else to get it for her again? Yep, it was supposed to happen 8 years ago, but uh, it was an accident. An accident? The two people who were supposed to get her immortality got into a car accident on the night the game was supposed to be played. Talk about bad luck. Yeah, so she was uh, not happy at all about how that went down. And she just gets some replacements for them? I assume they found some after all. Well, they did, but my grandma was paranoid about picking someone random. After all, she didn't want to get screwed over again. So instead, she let Cole and Sebastian pick some new participants. Naturally, they have their own agendas. You know what's funny, though? Because of that crash, that's how I met Zeph. Seriously? She leaned forward and covered her mouth as if to hide the growing giddiness on her face. Yeah, Zeph was part of the accident. He was going to be the person that wished for my grandma's immortality. Because of the accident, I basically got sent over to make sure that he was okay. It was an, it was an inter intern of sorts, I guess? <laughs> Grandma got you pulled in as an intern, huh? I'm in a paid position. Oh no, it was paid. What? They paid you? Boys, that's how Zeph and I met. It's a long story, but I eventually invited the guy to my house after he recovered. He must have really charmed you if he got to your house after a car accident. Well, it wasn't anything sexual, it was just... Like, he needed a place to stay. But it's a complicated thing. But that's where our relationship started. 
You know, it's kind of funny. Without Zeph, I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't have decided to try getting into making music seriously. Probably would have stayed on the path my grandmother had set out for me. Really? Zeph had that much of an influence over you? He was a lot of things I wished I was. Brave, confrontational, supportive, willing to say things I couldn't. He always pushed me to follow my dreams. Damn anyone who said otherwise. I was always playing with the idea of maybe starting a band, but he pushed me to re re really follow through with it. I also came up with the uh, stage name Miss Walker. <laughs> kind of cute, don't you think? His name of the band was Primordials. He thought that I might want to go with something a little elemental. Wait, that's your stage name? Did you think my actual last name was Miss Walker? Well, I thought you just got the name change, is all. You're surprisingly gullible. Ugh. So, what did that have to do with your grandma? Oh, right. Sorry, got off track there. Well, the point is that after the incident eight years ago, my grandma was grooming me to basically be part of the next Game of Fortune four years later. This was around the same time that Zeph and I started dating, and since Zeph was supposed to do it last time, it kind of made sense to prepare us both for it. My grandma gave us a rundown on all the rules, what to expect, that sort of thing. I was already sort of in the know about all this, since my grandma wanted me to be, like, a future leader and all, but... She really dub doubled down her efforts later. She made it extremely clear what she was expected of me, and how she could take away everything she gave me if I didn't help her. That sounds to me like extortion? Blackmail? Is that the right term? Something along those lines. Well, you have to remember that I did feel some sense of gratitude. Even though she was asking a lot from me, she was extremely willing and eager to help jumpstart our band's success. At the time, I didn't really care much about helping her, and... She wasn't always obsessed with this kind of thing. Remember all the good times and memories before she became so absorbed in all this mysticism and occult nonsense. I figured that if I helped her with this, then maybe she'd go back to normal, you know? The sweet and loving grandma that I knew ever since I was a little kid. I understand that, but it still sounds like she was just using him. Just some help shouldn't be conditional from family that supposedly cares about you. I know! I know that. But even so, I I just want to make I want things to be normal again. I just want her to be happy. Maybe things would have been better if she just left the digits even like your father did. I'd like to think so. Yes, I was just naive and hopeful that things would be better. But Something happened four years ago? Oh boy, did it! A whole lot of terrible shit happened four years ago. Steph and I entered into the game of fortune and we both survived, but... But... Well, first of all, even with all the training and information I had, I just broke down. I couldn't handle the madness, pain, and torment that went on in there. Constantly broke down and cried, barely able to get through the games. That was the only reason I was able to push myself through with some semblance of sanity, honestly. And yet... And yet... At the same time, I have her wishes granted. I gave my grandmother immortality and Zeph, he will... He took it away. What? Hard to believe, right? And Zeph would join me through all those horrible death games, push me forward, and then betray me right at the end. It's like a bad romance movie, or maybe it's like a Greek tragedy? Doesn't make any sense. I do something like that. Well, I think it's getting threatened. Ah, uh, so like, someone told him to do it or they'd hurt him. No, not him. They'd hurt me. You? Yep, guess they knew just where to push Zep to do whatever, whatever they said. Yeah, you know. He did it to protect me, but at the same time I just felt so betrayed by him. Like, how could this person that I love go behind my back like this? Why couldn't they confide in me? I'm sure they had his reasons. He probably just wants to protect you. Yeah. I'm sure of that too, but at the same time, it's just... Ugh. Return from the game, that's when everything went to shit. You! What the hell did you do? I had it. I had it in the... My mother was irate. I had never seen so much rage and fury from her before. Hey, she! What the hell happened? It, it was... Nothing but a blurry mess at the time. I'm still in shock, still overwhelmed, still trying to comprehend all the pain and suffering I went through. Not to mention, knowing that Zeph backstabbed me. Stop 
crying. Did you wish my immortality like I asked? I, I did. But who got rid of it? Who wished it away? It didn't take long for her to zero in on Seth. You traitorous street urchin! You that I shouldn't have trusted you. Too damn eager, too damn excited to get involved. Who are you with? What bastard set you up? Or is this really how you repay those who gave you a new lease on life? Who gave you a second chance? When I ask you a question, you better damn well answer. Ugh. Stuff. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, now you want to talk. You have freaking died four years ago. At least Lucas would have been useful. You've been nothing but a drain on my granddaughter, poisoning her mind, and now you've decided to get bold enough to strike out against a family that took care of you. You no know, damn shame. No gratitude. No have appreciation for the life we gave you. And now you're silent again. You know what? That's fine. If you want to stay silent, I'll make sure that you're silenced. Permanently. Oh, Grandma, stop. You wouldn't do this. Wait, my mom. What the heck? Oh, it's Grandma, stop. Oh, I must have, like, bumped my spacebar. I there's a hide interface. Yeah, I can't really see it. Too well. Because Zeph is mostly behind the thing. Oh, Grandma, stop. He, he must have had a reason. He, he wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do this without a reason. Move out of the way, Kishi. Oh, can't you see that this pitiful excuse of a man just has used you? Huh? That's not true. How oh, isn't it? He used you to get a better life. Get into these games, and he'll use you as a human shield if it comes to it. So move out of the way. He. He. By everything, I just kind of let him get executed by my grandmother like that. I trust him too much. I loved him too much to let him die like that. I had seen enough pain. I'd seen him in enough pain already. I had seen him die enough times already. I had seen him throw his life away from mine time and time again. And I didn't want this time to be real. To be permanent. He cares about me. He loves me. He must have had a reason. Please just let him get a word in. He, she. Can't you see? He's not gloating or cheering or flashing out at you. He's in pain. He's distressed. He knows that he's screwed up. Give him mercy. Mercy? Guy thinks that he can just take away what was rightfully mine and get mercy? I don't care if the Lord Almighty himself told Zeph to screw me over. He knew what punishment would await him if he so much as entertained the thought of turning his back on me. And so now he suffers the consequences. Move out of the way, Kishi. Last warning. Kishi, move. No. Kishi! I'm not moving. You have to kill me if you... That was a warning shot, Kishi. Uh-huh. Next time, be real. I'll pierce both your brain and your heart if I have to. I always bring you back, Kishi. Send you, send you to oblivion to think things over for a few years might do you some good. That's what it takes to get it clear in your head, and that's what I'll do. You wouldn't. Grandma, it's me, Kishi. What are you? Move out of the way. Kishi, she's not kidding around. Don't get yourself killed just because of me. Not worth it. Grandma, why? Why are you like this? What's happening to you? What is wrong with me, Kishi? I'm tired of all this treachery and nonsense. Like I said, I can always bring it back. Maybe you act in good behavior, then I'll let you bring Zeth back in four years, too. Believe what I was hearing at the time. My grandma was going to kill me and Zeth as if it were nothing. No shred of hesitation or guilt or sadness, just pure anger and retribution. She was lost. I didn't know who or what was standing before us at the time, but it wasn't my grandmother. It was just some other monster. Some other devil that had possessed her soul or something. You won't move? Fine then. You two can have your honeymoon in hell for all I care. Heishi! Screw you. You ungrateful little. Ugh! There was a blood curling scream. Actually, there was multiple, but that old man stood out from the others. Huh? <laughs> what the hell?
hell is happening? Get the hell out of my way, old man. Do you want to be next? Get your hands off of him. Cole, what are you doing? Goddamn bitch went against her word. That's what's happening. And one dog couldn't even do that. Dead weight. Just goddamn dead weight. Sudden chaos nearby. A wild crowd and commotion that drew my grandmother's attention away from us at the moment. But we were a moment away from death. She was going to kill us both. I was sure of it. Ah, uh, so that's what happened over there. Richard, you were there too? Yeah, me and my father were around when that horrible mess happened. Everything happened so fast that we must have not seen what Kishi and Zeph were going through. We had our own mess to deal with. That was a real chaotic time. But what I couldn't believe was how ready my grandma was to kill me and Zeph. Just didn't understand what was going on in her head. So what happened after that? Oh, after everything that happened, Zeph wasn't immediately sentenced to death, thankfully. I ended up having a private hearing about it. My grandma must have cooled down by that point because she was more concerned with the reason why Zeph acted the way he did than wanting to kill him over it. What did Zeph say? Did he admit that he was being threatened, or rather that they threatened him with your life? Just about. The problem was that when they asked who was threatening him, he couldn't give an answer. He afraid if he confessed that he'd be in danger? Oh, it wasn't quite that. It was more like he just didn't know exactly who threatened him? It was an anonymous threat. Clearly, whoever threatened him knew that he'd be participating, which was sort of a guarded secret. After all, they don't usually announce who's participating in these games. Usually only select few people know about it. Which narrowed it down quite a bit. There was a lot of speculation it was probably one of the other leaders that threatened him. Huh. Really? Yep. They thought that it might have been Sebastian, Nigel, or Cole. But none of them wanted to outright accuse one another. After all, if you can't trust your partners, who can you trust? Plus, the implications of that are terrifying, to say the least. I mean, that someone would be trying to hurt or possibly overthrow another member, right? That's a thought, at least, but no one wanted to believe that. In the digits of Eden, having immortality is more than just a boon. It's sort of a status symbol. A lot of people believe if you've got it, that you've got some kind of divine blessing. Oh, when you're brainwashed into thinking that, then of course they'll think it. I mean, it's sort of true, just not in the way that most people think. As Bell doesn't give it to people who deserve it, you just need people to grant it for you. Right, but the point is that having it represents power, authority, and legitimacy. That's why it's so coveted. Keeping my grandma from having that kind of power is like keeping her down. I mean, your influence within the digits of Eden. It's like some kind of political intrigue plot. It might be, but that's why I'm here. That's why I'm trying to give her what she wants. When she has her immortality, she can should hopefully be placated enough to leave me and Zeph alone. You and Zeph, huh? Even though he's a corpse? Never explained how you and Zeph survived going through this the first time. Oh, yeah. Guess I never did. Well, seems as good a time as any mention it, since it'll explain why some of us seem more relaxed and calm, right? Yeah. Richard, you know. I have a general understanding of it, though I probably don't understand it as well as someone who's lived through it. Suppose that's true. Anyway, why don't each of you follow me? Kishi stood up and walked over towards one of the walls. There was some kind of picture mounted up on it. Um... Got... No Richard. No Zeph. See this? Yep. Picture of our progress. Zeph likes to call it the scorecard. Oh, scorecard, huh? I looked over and felt some kind of familiarity, like I'd seen this before. But I've never taken a picture with everyone here. At least, I don't think so. Maybe it just wasn't exactly like this? No, there... Hmm. <clears throat> there must have been something that happened, right? I think I've seen something like this before. Oh, well, you definitely have. Big clovers around your name? Yeah. Means you've already won. That you've, that you've already gotten your wish. I should have been confused. I should have been asking so many questions. I just accept her words as fact, as if it were obvious, as though I'd already heard this before. You're surprisingly calm after hearing that news. No. 
Honestly, I'm more shocked at how calm I am over this than what you're implying here. Saying that we've been through this already, right? That those of us with clover, those clovers around our faces have gotten a wish granted? Exactly! And we all get a wish, the game's done. Hmm, I wonder how many times this has been explained to you. Maybe you just know it subconsciously at this point so you don't feel as shocked by it? And we've been looping, right? Just going through these games over and over and over. That's explain why I feel deja vu at times. Yeah, you're really understanding it now. There's no real secret to surviving here, it's just a matter of time. Win some, you lose many. At the end of the games, we'll all be returned back to the real world. It's just the rules of this realm. That's why you weren't crying up a storm when Zeph died, huh? You knew he'd be alive at the end of all this. Yeah, well, yeah, but I did try and ease him into it. Or into it, too. And we all come back to the end, you really come back the same, you know? One round of all this would be enough to traumatize you for life. <laughs> Playing it at least 16 times is... Well, it changes something in you. Sometimes for the better, but most times for the worse. Would it have killed you to let me know about all this from the start? No, but the drive to survive is a powerful thing. You can never know what the standings are until the final round. When you think you're going to die, you really do give it your all. That kind of drives it. Makes it so you're more likely to at least make it to this stage of the game. Sorry if it seemed harsh. I know it must have been painful to think you'd never see Clyde again, or you'd actually die for real here, but... One of those things that really pushes you forward. I'd be furious with her. I had the right at this point, didn't I? How many people here could have eased my heart if they just told me the truth? Told me everything was gonna be fine. None of them did. They all just let me suffer in heartache and pain, making it push me forward somehow. What if it doesn't? What if you end up broken and hopeless? Didn't you say that you broke down the first time you came here? How do you know that some people were just gonna instantly throw in the towel? That's what your partner is for. And you're at your lowest point. Sometimes you hear their voice or feel some sense of strength surge within you. They're a driving force that pushes you onward. At least that's the intention, I think. Have you ever felt like Clyde was pushing you on from beyond the grave? From time to time, it sure felt like there was some force leading me to the right path. Sort of. It's like that! That's how you're supposed to keep pressing on even when things seem impossible. Alright, if what you're saying is true then... I look back to the picture. I waste my time bothering to fight at all? I mean, according to this, I've already won my wish, haven't I? I get more than one wish? Nope, you only get one. If you win right now, I'm pretty sure Belle would just start the round over again until someone new came along. Yeah, I figured that was the case, but I had to ask anyway. And I guess I just died, and... Sorry they made it all this way to only find that out, but that's how it happens sometimes. Just an unfortunate twist of fate. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, a heavy sigh and felt a heavy weight fall off my chest. If there was nothing to be done, then there really was, wasn't really a point in fighting anymore. Plus, according to this, why and I have already gotten our wishes? So really, we've done all we can here, right? In a way, it felt relieving. But at the same time, I just felt exhausted. Who knows how much pain and suffering we've gone through? We're only halfway there. Another sigh, but tried to stand straight. Nothing I could do about it, right? I just had to press on until the end. In futility, there is peace. In futility, there is acceptance. At least I meant in this game, I wouldn't really have to try. Same time, I just feel so... tired. Hmm, I've got a question. I had a general idea about how the game would end and all that, but... What do clover colors mean? Those are the types of wishes that are granted. Gold is life, blue is immortality, green is mortality, and white is death. Huh, so then Everett wished for someone to die. Huh? Didn't notice that the wreath around his portrait is white? I didn't really take notice of it, really. Come back to look at the portrait and rub church chin. That's weird. Is it? I mean, they're here to keep Nigel safe, so why would he want someone dead? Did Nigel give them some other task? 
He used brow for her, though she stared at the portraits a little long before shrugging and shaking her head. Hmm, well, I guess that's his business. We took a step back from the portrait and sat back down on the couches. So Richard, what are you gonna wish for? Hmm? You haven't gotten your wish yet, so I'm just kind of curious. Oh, well, I'm just gonna revive my mom, that's all. At home while I was away, never got the chance to say goodbye to her. Honestly, I'm really only here because my dad had someone he wanted to bring back from the dead and he's gotten his wish. Not much that I want out of this, really, so that seemed to be the best option for me. That makes sense. It's as good a wish as any. Yep. Well, I don't know how much time I'll have to see my mother before she passes on again. It's gonna be like a blink. She's here and then she's gone again. That's a good question. I've really thought about it that, that much. I think that the way it works is that Belle brings them back in a healthy state. It's in some state where they won't just, like, die immediately after being revived. Yeah, it would be kind of weird to bring someone back to life with a bullet still stuck in the chest. Is that what happened to your mom? No, it's just an example. She died due to heart complications, old age, that kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I was afraid your mother was a victim of some drive-by or something. That'd be a funny way to go out at that age, I suppose. I'm not sure I'd say that getting shot up is funny. For the conversation in Dreya much longer, we heard the sound of a door opening. Ah, so that's what, why we got the game we did. Elizabeth walked into the lounge, closing the door quietly behind her. Elizabeth, you're the sole survivor of your game? That seems to be the case, which makes sense considering that the three of you all survived together. Maybe Philip was right. Perhaps a man really is a good luck charm for me. He's going to be surviving every game that we go through together. Except that this time, he didn't make it out. So it would seem, which really makes it true that he's a good luck charm for me. I'd have asked for a better outcome. Don't look at me like that. Surely you know that he's just gonna gonna be just fine. Yeah, I guess. Nice to hearing people badmouth him like that all the time though. Well, I promise you this well deserved that well I won't be doing it much longer anyway. Regardless. Doctor was towards a portrait on the wall, glancing at it only for a few seconds before nodding to herself and then looked back to the rest of us. Seems I'm still in the running to win a game here. Devin's been filled on the details of the game, too, so you don't need to explain it all to her. How convenient. Thank you, Kishi. Not a problem. Be bad if she ends up winning just because she didn't know she already won before. True, and I'd much prefer not to linger here any longer than I must. Shall we be off? Actually, there was something that I wanted to ask you, Elizabeth. Oh, well, if you keep it brief, I don't mind chatting for a few moments. Right, well, you're an expert on the supernatural, aren't you? I'd like to think myself well read on the subject. Then, do you know if removing immortality from someone can make them go crazy? I assume you're talking about your grandmother's condition, yes. Yeah, I mean, she just really hasn't been acting like herself for a while now. And it's been getting worse with each passing year. I thought that maybe she was just obsessed with getting immortality, but... She just really isn't right in the head. Something's wrong with her, and it all started after she had her immortality removed. Hmm... Elizabeth paused and hummed herself for a few seconds before looking back up to Kishi. Well, unfortunately, I can't quite give you a precise answer to this and can only speak anecdotally. Especially since I don't really know anyone that's gone through what your grandmother has. That's fine. I don't need a precise answer. I just need something to latch onto. I see. And then hopefully what I can tell you will give you some peace of mind. I've heard and seen cases of people... Losing their, seemingly losing their minds or becoming obsessed with various occult material after having experiences involving them. Sort of mania bordering on this session. I'd say it's more akin to an addiction of sorts. Addiction to the occult. Sounds scary. It certainly is. Losing your mind to wild urges like those can get yourself and others into serious trouble. The real problem is that it's a special type of addiction. It's not physical or mental, but instead spiritual. A spiritual addiction? Yes, think of a physical addiction that affects your body and how you feel physically. Mental addictions affect how you think and behave. And a spiritual addiction is, what, something that affects your soul or something? Precisely, it's something that affects your soul. What? Don't tell me you doubt the existence of a soul after everything you've been through at this point. Now. It seems rather easy to accept compared to God's mythical death games and being revived from the dead, does it not? Well, you say that, I just... What the heck does a spiritual addiction look like? 
Well, I doubt that I could give you a succinct lesson on the structure of a soul as I understand it, so I'll do my best to at least explain what spiritual addiction looks like. We look similar to a variety of other types of addiction. You would crave and desire experiences and substances that satisfy the needs of your soul. You might end up feeling physical pain, intense urges, anxiety, depression, mental anguish, all sorts of nasty symptoms. Stuff like that you can only alleviate if you indulge your soul's desires. Okay, so you think my grandma might have some kind of soul addiction to being immortal? That's just a theory. I've always imagined immortality as a sort of patch that you stick onto a soul. Remove it, it's kind of like tearing off a bandage or having a wax removal. Painful, but in theory it should ease up with time. But that hasn't happened. Out of things seem to be getting worse with time. Right, which leads me to think that when removing it, there might be more damage to her soul. It was more like tearing a hole in the wound of the, in the soul? Something that festers and gets infected with time rather than healing. That's something that would explain her de deteriorating condition. Yes, I figured if I gave her immortality, she'd be happy and go back to normal. It's possible, like I said. I've never really researched much into this specific kind of phenomenon. Granted, her immortality might just be what she needs, or it might not make any difference at all. I wish I could give you a more concrete solution, but there's just not much information. I, I see. I wouldn't fret too much over it, though. If it's one thing I've learned over many years of studying these kinds of things, huh. but eventually a solution is found. Yeah, one year, or one century. A whole century? Your grandmother will be immortal. She'll have nothing but time on her hands. <laughs> well, if your curiosity has been stated, shall we move on to the game? Yeah, I guess we can. Ugh. Not quite the answer she was looking for, but the answer that she was going to get. Still, there was nothing else that we could do but press on and get on to the final game. Thus, we entered into the waiting room once again. So here we are once again. What the last game. Hydration break. Well, one last game this time. Mm, can you even call it the last game if it's not going to be the last game? Well, wh what would you call it? Hmm. How about a finale? That was quick to appear on the screen this time around. Because that's what this is, you know, a finale for all the trials and tribulations that you've gone through. Yeah, but only this one time. Just this one time, Devin, sweetie, you can go through all sorts of changes with each run. Foolish to think that you only grow a regress when you get your own wish granted, you know. I guess you have a point there. Was it really right to call us a finale? I mean, this isn't really the end. It's still the exciting end of the round, wouldn't you say? And you can have multiple finales. It's like in an orchestra, the finale of one piece doesn't mean it's the end of the entire event, right? I suppose that makes sense. Exactly. Now, I'm sure you're all excited for the finale this round, aren't you? More or less, I suppose. Enthusiasm in this group is severely lacking. Why couldn't William have made it this far? That boy is always one of the more excitable ones. He'll get his chance eventually. Yes, I suppose he will. Regardless, the game they'll have you for play will be... Step, step, shoot. SSS? Sure, you can shorten it down to that if you want. But, no idea what kind of game that is. You'll find out soon enough! Enter the game room and let's get this finale started! See you soon! Hmm. Well, we'll find out what kind of game it is next time. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing. I did get free code. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, if you really enjoyed it, consider supporting the channel. All support greatly helps to keep you in content like this and more. All links for that in the description below, along with links to me on social media. So thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is Rinium T signing out. There goes my controller. <laughs> That's an it, outro. No, no, I actually clicked roll back. Okay, bye! <laughs> Controller slipped!